Missions Pulse. Know God's heart, join his mission. A lot of people follow you uh, on, on social media. Maybe they know you vicariously through your tweets, uh, but let's give them a little bit more. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you a short question. You answer with just a quick answer, okay? And um, then we'll, I'll give you more time to expound if you're like, why in the world did he ask me that? <laughs> um, real quick, get to know Karen Swallow Pryor. All right, here we go. You ready? I oh, hope so. <laughs> I, 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 yes. I hope so too. Okay, three adjectives that describe you. Snarky. Um, <laughs> snar snarky. You can't stop there. Bookish. Okay. And um, and hopefully kind. Good. Yeah, I see that. Snarky. I like how you started with that one. What's your favorite spot in America that you've ever been to? My house, <laughs> my home. Uh, I love uh, my home. I, I I just it's my favorite place. But um, um, the probably the favorite place I visited is um Santa Fe, New Mexico. Ooh, cool. Okay. Um, the first answer gives us a little uh definitely a little more into um who you are as a person personality. What is your favorite food? Salad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love salad. Oh, oh, there's a wide array. We'll just leave it at that. Cat or dog person? Dog. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee. All right. All right. That's why we're friends. Um, Jane <laughs> Austen or Jesus? <laughs> oh, wow. I had um, to ask well, that question. Jesus, of course. Jesus, of course, but Jane loves Jesus. So, okay. You know. All right. Phew. <laughs> I, I had to make that reference to your new podcast, which we'll ho hopefully talk about here soon. Um, people can check it out, by the way, janeandjesus.substack.com or just Google it. You'll find it. Uh, your favorite female Bible uh, char character in the Bible and why? I'm going to say Eve. And the reason why, well, there are a lot of reasons why, but I think Eve, Eve is a subject in a lot of literature. And so I think even just she's come alive to me beyond the pages of the Bible, especially like in John Milton's Paradise Lost. Mm. And um, there's just so much complexity to her character and mm. her decisions and, and the outcome. Um, she's just an interesting character. Yeah. When you when you describe her like that, um, it really reminds me of. You, have you read much of George MacDonald, Scottish no. pastor I, poet? Yeah, I know who he is, but I uh, have not read. I don't read much fantasy. Okay, yeah, it's um, he often writes. There's always a wise woman in a white gown walking through the forest, mm -hmm. <laughs> Lilith fantasies, and it always just he is very evishness to his characters. Mm. So I, I kind of mm. see that as well. All right. Um, what about your favorite male uh, Bible character and why? Um, I don't think we always think of him as a character, but I, but he is, and I'm going to say John um, because, well, he, he is a character in the sense that he is one of the disciples, but he's also like a writer. Uh, he's a, he's an amazing writer. His books are some of my favorite books in the Bible. So awesome. I love him. Cool. All right. Um, what is your favorite historical Christian missionary? Oh, um, let's see. Um, I had, yeah, I did. Um, uh, there, there's too many to choose from. I know. Yeah. You know, I, when I, oh, when I think about missionaries, can I cheat a little bit? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can it's missions polls, okay, I guess okay, so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's not a historical one. Oh, so okay. when I think of a missionary, honestly, it, well, it's probably cheating in the other way too. But um, I think of my husband, who's a public school teacher. Um, you know, public schools in our America are under a lot of fire these days, a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, and they get a lot of criticism. And I think a lot of people don't realize how many um, good Christian people are serving in a way yeah. that really is a lot like being a missionary. Mm. So in a way that's, you know, so I know that's not what you meant, but um, we'll take I like it. to think about missions that way. So we'll, we'll go yeah. with the um, Charles Spurgeon, uh, you're either a missionary or an imposter. So there you have it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Best quote ever. Be yourself. Everyone else is taken by Oscar Wilde. Ooh, cool. Okay. And lastly, um, the top two books that have impacted your life. 
Uh, the top one is probably Gustave Flaubert's Madame Bovary, the 19th century French novel about a romantic woman whose life was ruined, really. Um, and she ruined it herself because she um, was, you know, she had so many romantic ideas that she couldn't really um, make much out of the real world around her and ruined her life. Um, and then I would say um, Jane Eyre is just a, a longtime favorite um, and uh, a character and a story that I think just really spoke to me and it continues to speak to me, um, not just in being a woman, but even simply um, being a Christian in the modern world and trying to maintain my faith with integrity. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Okay, well, on that note, um, those are just snippets. Why don't you catch people up uh, about your story? You know, how, how did you come to faith? How, how did you come into this space where you are now? Hmm. Well, I was um, very blessed to be born into a, a Christian home where my parents really became serious um, Christians um, when I was young. So all of my memories are, are growing up in church um, and accepting Christ at a young age, being baptized um, at a young age. And uh, I also just always loved stories and books. My mom read to me. Um, I always had my nose in a book. And so those two worlds just kind of that, those were my two worlds is, is church and books. And I actually didn't see how they really could be reconciled. They were sort of compartmentalized and I didn't know how to reconcile them um, really until I was um, in my PhD program um, because I didn't grow up knowing or realizing that the life of the mind could be something that could be a way to um, worship God and glorify him and serve the church. Um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll say this, I think this might be of interest to you and your listeners of being a, you know, in a missions organization. Um, I, you know, I grew up at a time when the message that I received what, from the church was that if I really loved God, um, then I would, you know, be willing to be a missionary in some, you know, strange foreign land. I, that might be what he would call me to, or if I, you know, or a pastor's wife. Since I was a girl, I wasn't going to be a pastor. So people who really loved God became pastors or missionaries. Um, and I, that made me angry and resentful because mm, I didn't yeah. feel called to those things. And so it just took a long, long time um, for me to through reading and exposure, um, but first really kind of rejecting um, the Christian life because I thought that those were the options in front of mm. me and they weren't, I didn't feel called to them. And um, so I, I thought I would pursue um, academia and, uh, kind of apart from him. And it wasn't until I realized that I could serve the Lord and serve the church through that calling that it all sort of came together. Missions Pulse. Know God's heart, join his mission. This podcast is powered by Within Reach Global. Subscribe, watch and listen on YouTube today. Visit missionspulse.com.